Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. I've had this bioactive banded cricket culture bin set up for close to two years now and it's high time for an update. In this update I'll explain how I set it up, how I care for it, and what I have learned and changed since I made the first video back in June of 2022. The bin is just a plastic bin I got from the hardware store that I've ventilated. You can see I have a lot of cross ventilation up near the top, some on the other side as well, and on both of the uh, sides here. It did just keep in mind that I live in a fairly dry climate. You might need more ventilation than I have if you live in a climate with a lot more humidity. Let's look at the substrate. Substrate starts out with organic compost. This is just one of many possibilities that you could use. Uh, banded crickets need soil or soil-like substrate in which to oviposit or lay their eggs, and it needs to remain somewhat moist. I have plenty of organic compost on hand and it fits the bill. Works really well for that. I'm sure there are some other options I could use, but I have about an inch and a half of that organic compost on the bottom of the enclosure. And then I have leaf litter on top of that. Works really well. Now let's talk about the furniture for lack of a better term. I have this six quart lid here just because it uh, helps me keep the, the substrate a little cleaner because crickets are messy and I have food dishes on top of it. And so uh, the crickets tend to kick food out and dump food out along the edges, and it, it just makes it easier for me to clean up if I have that in there. There's a lot of crickets and springtails that hide under there as well. And then I have a dry food dish. This has some commercial cricket diet in it. I've used several brands, and they all seem to work. I have a little cutout there for the smaller crickets to get in a little bit more easily. And I also add dog uh, kibble, just really cheap dog food pellets to this, and they, they do well with that as well. This is for fresh foods like apple slices, orange slices, zucchini, sweet potato, green beans, all kinds of things that I put in there. Uh, it looks like it's time to uh, fill that up again because they've emptied it. And let's talk about the heating. Up against this side here, I have a heat mat. I believe it's an 11 inch by 11 inch heat mat. And on it's on the outside of the bin. And on the outside of the heat mat, I have a sheet of polystyrene that is mylar lined on one side so the mylar is right up against the heat mat and then the polystyrene and that helps to insulate and reflect the heat back into the bin and then in the winter i have another smaller heat mat on this side because uh, in the summer this room doesn't get any cooler than about 78 degrees fahrenheit so one heat mat is ample to keep the enclosure warm enough for the crickets to breed in the winter it gets down to about 68 degrees fahrenheit even maybe even a little lower sometimes i do that in the cooler months it seems to work fine keeps cricket production up. Otherwise, it slows down quite a bit. Now, you can see I've got egg crate in here. And I have a particular configuration of egg crate, and there are millions of ways you could do this. But I've cut this egg crate down so it's not too high. I don't want it too close to the edge of the enclosure. And you can see there are a lot of crickets that like to snuggle up to the heat. And then I've put a smaller piece here to help create a gap between this piece and this other larger piece. These two larger pieces, there's a little bit of a gap between so they don't, they're not too tightly against each other. And then I get, have this piece that I put up here so that these pieces don't fall. And that seems to work really well. The crickets hide in all of them. Even though they, they tend to go up near the heat, they, they'll be everywhere. Works out really well. I could probably put some more in and do some other things with that, but I find this works for me. Now let's talk about uh, watering. There are three things I do to water the enclosure, one of which I already spoke about, and that is I just provide moist food items like apples, oranges, zucchini, that sort of thing. They get a lot of hydration from those. I also make sure to pour water down here near the heat so the eggs have a nice moist warm area in which to incubate. They grow a lot faster when they're warmer, and so I tend to keep this area warm, and other parts of the enclosure are warm too, and the crickets probably lay eggs in lots of different places, but that's going to be the place where it's warmest and where the eggs are going to develop most quickly. So I make sure that area doesn't dry out and I just have to check it periodically and see how it's doing and I make sure that it never does dry out. And then third, I use a, a spray bottle and I simply just spray the sides of the bin on this side. I don't spray near the, the egg crate, too close to the egg crate because it, when it gets wet, it gets nasty and falls apart. But I just spray on the cool side of the bin where there's no heating and even a little bit on the leaves, and the crickets will come and drink there if they need to. And that's all I do for hydration of the crickets, those three things. 
seems to work really well. I want to thank my patrons at Patreon. I really love to share information, uh, tutorial videos like this one, many other um, videos that uh, really aim to help people learn about the creatures we all love. And one of the best ways that you can help me do that is by supporting me on Patreon. Um, and if you would like to do that, please check out the link that I'll put at the end of the video or in the description. All right, now let's talk about maintenance. Maintenance is extremely easy in this enclosure. I have a cleanup crew in here, Springtails. That's all I'm using for the cleanup crew, and they really do help uh, quite a bit. Um, I don't put anything else in here as a cleanup crew, and, and I, there are good reasons for that, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I've only changed the substrate twice, and it's been about a year and three quarters, and I've only changed the substrate twice, and I didn't do it because the substrate was smelling. I did it because there were too many isopods in it. So um, we'll talk more about the isopods in just a minute as well. Uh, I do have to add leaf litter, and of course I have to add food. Um, I refresh the food every day, make sure that they're hydrated every day. And beyond changing the substrate and occasionally removing these egg crates, these are getting to the point where they're a little bit uh, covered in frass and and so on then you know I'll take those out and replace those but that is all I have to do for maintenance and it's really not very demanding at all much much easier than raising crickets in the traditional way I used to use um, and I, I don't ever want to go back so what are some things that I've learned um, about this bin one is that odor remains minimal in this bin it's really fantastic um, it's not something that you'd smell uh, from across the room. It's not even something that really smells objectionable quite close up. You know, most cricket bins, you wouldn't never dream of sticking your head into the bin and taking a big whiff. Um, that would be mm, foolhardy, to say the least. But with this bin, I have done so, and it mostly smells like forest humus. There's a little bit of a crickety odor, um, but it's just a little tinge of it, and it's not bad at all. And it's not something you'd notice from anywhere else in the room. Uh, even just right next to the enclosure, honestly. I don't notice it at all. I'd have to put my face right down in there and take a big uh, breath to be able to notice that. So um, I've also learned not to add isopods, which I did accidentally twice. And uh, the reason why is because right above where I keep this bin, I have um, several powder blue isopod colonies of various colors, but the species, Porcelliona dysprenosis. So occasionally some will fall in. And that is why... I have made a modification to this lid. The lid used to just have these um, ventilation holes exposed without any tape. And I have put the breathable medical tape on there to preserve some of the airflow. It's gonna reduce it, of course, but it's, it's gonna keep some of that airflow going and uh, without allowing isopods that fall onto the lid to crawl into the holes. And since I put this here, I haven't had any problems with isopods showing up in there. The reason why I keep, wanna keep the isopods out is because the two times that I did change the substrate, what happened was that I noticed large amounts of isopods in here correlated with the uh, reduction in the breeding of the crickets. Not completely eliminated breeding of the crickets, but reduced it a lot to the point where I was having problems. I didn't have enough crickets. So um, every time I changed the substrate, the isopods, and took all the isopods out as part of that process, um, cricket breeding ramped right back up again. So I don't know if the isopods were getting the eggs of the crickets and eating them. I don't know if they were eating newly molted crickets. I don't know if they were out competing the crickets. What was going on, but um, there was a high correlation between low production in crickets and high numbers of isopods. So um, I'm not going to keep them in there. And I don't use water crystals. When I first started out, I was using water crystals to hydrate the crickets, but I've learned that water crystals can have negative effects on some organisms that consume them. And though I used them for years and I didn't notice any negative effects, I figured it's cheaper not to use them. And if there are any negative effects, I'm avoiding them. And the methods of hydration that I explained seem to be perfectly adequate for the crickets, so I'm not worried about it. I did ex mention that I do need supplemental heat. I have the two heaters, one on each side, during the winter um, because it's insufficient to have just one um, in the winter temperatures that I experience in this room. So all in all, it has been a great success. I'm going to keep doing this indefinitely. 
And uh, if you try it out, let me know what you think. Um, and let me know what your experience is as well. You can check out my other videos on cricket breeding, both in the traditional manner and the first video I made on bioactive cricket enclosures here. And thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and Bavarian pets and live food tutorials like this one. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.